Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This time, I'm stripping Link. This may sound weird, but it's gonna make sense later. Just know, we're going naked for now. I almost said Commando, then I realized, no, that's something completely different, and considering that you can take off all of Link's clothes, I beg and plead to God he's not going to go Commando, but whatever, anyway. What's more important is, now that we're back within the Shrine of Resurrection, first of all, this Korok sucks. There is literally no reason before this DLC pack to come back here, so how are you supposed to expect that there's going to be a Korok seed in the first area you went into? It's dumb. But more importantly, we have something to do. That something being, examining where we got our Sheikah Slate from. Sheikah Slate and Champion Verification complete. Activating the Divine Beast Tamer's Trial. Associated locations have been marked on the map. Take hold of the provided weapon to begin the trial. So. The reason that I made Link go naked, to an extent, is because of this weapon. My weapon stash is full. <sighs> but I like all of the weapons I have. No. No! No! Well, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm gonna take a real quick trip to Hatino so I can drop off one of my weapons in my house because I kind of legitimately like all of the weapons that I have and then I'll be back here in a minute. This sucks. Actually, while I'm uh, here, I might as well say one thing I truly, truly don't like about this game. Because over time, at first I was very, very positive about it. And I'm, well, still very, very positive about it now. But I have found quite a few issues that I do have with this game over time. And uh, I might as well talk about one of the main ones now. The weapon stash is kind of dumb. You can upgrade it over time, and it's honest to god my fault that I didn't. But it is legitimately annoying that, you know... You can't hold an important weapon like that without your weapon stash being emptied up a little bit. It's just, it's dumb, because there might be a lot of weapons you want to hold on to. And where is the guy that'll let me... Oh, I think I have to sleep until morning. Ew, so many inconveniences right now. It's not a big deal. I make it sound a lot worse than it already is. But I will say right now, the stash... Uh, the weapon stash is a pretty big issue. That I am not going to say isn't. Uh, I do feel they could made the game a little bit better in that sense. Now, I think it was necessary to add, strictly because there is a blood moon. The, you know... This wasn't meant to happen. This really wasn't. But... Uh, whatever, I guess. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, um, the weapon stash is kind of important to have strictly because I just don't see how weapons would feel important if you could hold a million and ten of them. So I think the weapon stash was important to give weapons a little bit of a more important feeling and add a little bit of strategy to what weapons you drop and what weapons you keep. But, you know, uh, whatever. I want a gear display. I want a weapon mount. 100 rupees, you know what, I have the extra cash, it might as well go into building my house. I might make it a long-term goal in this series to actually fully upgrade my house. It's not too difficult to do, to be fair, so I think it'd be worth it. But one thing I do miss about this game is this text. I really, really enjoy these guys. I don't know, I just, I think they're really, really unique. Uh, Bolson and Carson are both very, very fun. And the other guy who helps build the house actually currently isn't here, but he also does have a pretty interesting side quest attached to him, so that's something. I cannot display the Master Sword. I 
believe that to be the case. But I might as well display that, because that is kind of an important thing that I won't be able to get ever again. So if it's uh, displayed in my house, I don't mind. And now we can go back and actually for real start the Champions Ballad. Jeez. Alright, now we can grab that weapon. <sighs> I'm not gonna try to let that get me down, but that was a terrible pace breaker, and it kind of annoys me that that happened, but... <laughs> the reason I had Link go naked is because this is the one time it's actually viable to do so. Well, not viable, but it's not a hindrance to do so. I am Maz Koshia. I now address the one who wishes to master a divine beast. To undertake this task requires unwavering dedication. That weapon defeats foes with one hit. However, the reverse is also true. You can use this weapon's ability only twice within a set period of time. Only when it's glowing. When enough time passes, the weapon will regain its sheen and its power. At the four marked locations within the Great Plateau, defeat all monsters present to prove your power. If you are not up to the challenge, leave this plateau. The weapon will return here, and the trial will end. We got the One Hit Obliterator. A weapon that defeats foes with one hit, and causes the user to die from one hit. It loses its sheen and power after two consecutive uses, but it will eventually regain both. This is why I thought it would be interesting to go as Naked Link, because I didn't do that throughout the entirety of the series before, because I'm not one of the people who thinks, uh, you know, ooh, I can't wait to play is nothing but Link in his underwear, that's not really what I wanted to do, to be fair, and I also think a lot of the clothing that you can get in this game looks really, really nice, but now that it is actually viable to go, or not, again, viable isn't the right word there, it's plausible to go... Uh, as Naked Link without having a lot of negatives. Now that that's the case, I'm gonna be doing that. Just, you know, for fun. Why not? It can't hurt. But if we check the map, you'll see that there are four areas that we can go to, or we need to go to. All of these are new challenges, but there are, uh, there, uh, there are enemies we need to defeat before we can actually tackle those challenges. So I guess those are also a challenge in and of themselves. Selves? Self? Whatever. All I know is that this is really when the combat starts to get pretty interesting in this game. Before it was interesting, you could think about different ways to deal with enemies, but to an extent, you could kind of just spam. Now, we do have to worry a little bit more about where enemies are and exactly when they can see us. Because again, we take one hit. And if you can't see that Bokoblin over there thinking that I might be over here, he has a bow. Bows can really, really easily get to you. So you want to be very, very, very careful around these areas. This is something I really, really like about the Champion's Ballad. There are a lot of things I dislike about it, but this is one of the many things I really enjoy about it. Uh, if anything, I would recommend using your bow more than the one-hit obliterator because, well, first of all, the one-hit obliter obliterator, again, does kind of lose its sheen after a while and doesn't kill enemies immediately, so, you know, you want to be careful about that. And also, a bow just is a lot safer. You don't have to worry about getting up close and personal and accidentally taking damage because you really cannot do that at all. Because um, again, one hit. One hit and you die. So just bows are a little bit more... A little bit nicer to use here. Also, jerk move on the developer's part. There are keys around here. A lot, a lot of keys around here. So you want to be careful about those guys. I want to hop up here just because I don't want to... Oh, hi. I actually didn't know there was someone up here. Whoops. Well, I guess that's good. I guess. I think, bro, what does it have? That is a total of 26 power. Uh, attack up by 16. 
Uh, let's see. 26 power is better than... Uh, nothing, really, that I have. Uh, the Lionel Bow is something I do want to keep strictly because it has three arrows to use. That was close. Again, the keys freak me out a little bit because they really, really, really easily do damage on you. And when you can only take one hit, everything is scary. Literally everything. I don't think you have to kill the keys to actually get anywhere here, but, you know, you want to be careful. They also have guys with stabs, and fun fact, stabs are a little bit longer than the one-hit obliterator. Also, I really just want to note, I love the name of the one-hit obliterator. It's just kind of funny to me. I do want to take that shield, actually. It's pretty bad, but there's just something so nice about it, strictly because it's the, sh it's the shield Link was designed to wear. You know, I want to wear it sometimes, at least. But I don't know, maybe that's just me being kind of a purist about wearing certain types of clothes. Also, fun fact, uh, the one-hit obliterator has, like, almost no power when it's not fully powered up, so you don't really want to use that to attack people. Another reason that the bow and arrow is a much, much better uh, option than using the one-hit obliterator consistently. Also, this guy sucks. Mmm. There are quite a few elemental rods that are scattered throughout the Great Plateau. This can be challenging. Luckily, you do save your game as soon as you get to the area that you're trying to get to, or at least get close to one of the areas. Uh, one of the main areas? Is that what I'm trying to say? Maybe. Who knows? Um, this Bokoblin wasn't actually facing me first time through. Nice. And the other bow goblins apparently don't care when their friends die, so that's also something that's kind of nice. Uh, this is also a good thing to remember. Headshots do do more damage than doing a normal hit to the body. So you do want to keep in mind, headshots are probably the way to go if you're using your bow and arrow, which again, I would recommend doing. You guys suck. I could probably hit you and get you away from me to be... Okay, you came out of nowhere. You came out of nowhere. I want to see if I can take a different approach right now. I will probably cut if I die too many times, but if I'm trying to take a different approach and that approach works out better, I'll probably show off the entirety of what I was thinking. Uh, I want to actually get a lot higher so that I can have the ability to get easier headshots because that's not what I meant to do. Uh, bye. Hi. Oh, spin attack, please. That works out relatively well. Those keys were about to beat the crap out of me. Back away. I wanted to backflip, not do whatever I just did there. Let's take a minute to kind of reacquaint myself with what I was trying to do and not what I failed at doing. Yeah! I wanted to get headshots. That's what I wanted to do. That rock actually would have killed me, and that kind of scares me. I want to be able to get headshots a lot easier in this area, so that's why I'm kind of taking things a little bit slower and uh, actually trying to get the best angle I possibly can when going about these things. This guy's not too scary because he only has a bow. I wanted that chest. I kind of wanted that chest. I appreciate you not giving it to me. I've never picked this up. Oh, it's a Fennec bow. Never mind then. I don't care that much about it. Uh, let's see. I should be able to one-hit a chew, right? Right? I should be able to. I can't aim down low enough for that. This should be better. There we go. Easy, easy, easy. All right. Now that I've gotten rid of a lot of these guys, there's only a few over here. These should be the ones with the elemental rods. Yep. There we go. Now this guy knows I'm here, so I want to take a few precautions and just headshot him. There we go. And that should be it. Right? Are there a few more? There might be a few more. Yeah, there's one more over here. That is a black bow goblin. I don't know if a headshot will automatically kill him, but it's worth trying. Oh, he saw me. Welp. Um, I can use the one-hit obliterator. It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, he somehow didn't see me running up right in his face. I, I don't know. The enemies are a little bit weird in this game, specifically with how they... Or when they recognize you're there. Um, sometimes they're recognizing you from a million miles away. And then sometimes you're right up in their face and they don't see you. It's odd. But what's odder is the shape of that shrine. We haven't seen something like that before. I, again, want to pick up this shield just because I'm... Uh, I don't know, pure... I don't know if purist is the right word. I doubt it is. Whatever, the point is I want to pick up that shield because it looks nice. 
And, uh, the shrine should be right over here. Similarly to the challenge that we just completed, the shrines that are given to you after completing these small gauntlet of enemies are also significantly more challenging than other shrines you would have been doing throughout the main campaign of the game. Collected Soul. Alright, I forget exactly what these shrines are about, so this is kind of going to be a little bit blind-ish for me. Blind-ish? I don't know. Um, so, let's get acquainted with my surroundings first, and then we can continue going on. Uh, what I want is to get past here. I want to be able to run down here and not, not die. That's going to be happening a lot. Get used to it. Alright, what I was trying to say... Uh, first of all, I think this is kind of important to note as well. Uh, you cannot equip different weapons while doing this task. Meaning that all of the shrines that I'm doing right now have to be done with the one-hit obliterator equipped. Meaning that every single shrine I have to do here has to be done with limited health. That's not a good thing. It makes some of these really, really challenging. But what I want to do is I want to, I believe, move this out and try to catch one of these. I kind of want that chest. It'll respawn, so I should be able to get this with relative ease. Uh, that didn't work out as planned. You know, okay, I kind of wanted that ball to... This chest is going everywhere. This chest is really flying all over the place. I might not be able to catch it. If I can't, I don't think it's anything too important, so I don't care too much. But if I can get it, I didn't... <sighs> None of this is going as planned. Please. Thank you. Okay, slow and steady, because this can pop out pretty easily. And... This should be fine. There we go. Got that chest. I don't remember what's inside of it, but I feel like it's something kind of interesting. I mean, a lot of the chests in these shrines should be kind of cool, strictly because it's bomb arrows. I was gonna say strictly because these shrines are so difficult, they should have some relatively cool things to get from them, but no. Never mind, I was wrong. Uh, now what I really, really want to get is that smaller glowing orange ball, because that is what I need to complete this shrine. Two for one? Sure. Sure, I guess that makes bringing this over a little bit easier, so I don't mind that, I guess. Eh. Uh, I think there's something else for me to do. Oh, what I want to do is bring it over here. Okay, okay. This is where things start getting a little bit tricky. I have to re-navigate through these falling spiky balls and, uh, with this in my hand. So if I wanted to use Magnesis to stop the spiky balls on the way down, I could. If I wanted to do it on the way up, I couldn't. It's not too bad. I just... It blindsided me, to be fair, first time, so that was something. That's what I needed to do, but now there's something else which is optional. I think it gives me a chest as well, and I want to do it. I'm a sucker for optional stuff, so I'm going to go do it. This can not be picked up. Why? I actually can't pick that ball up. That makes no sense, but okay. This can get out of here. Shaka shaka, get out. And now I want the big glowing ball. Come, come. Luckily the- oh, Okay, well, that's fine. Luckily the balls are actually a lot easier to get than the chest, because the balls don't really go flying every which way. Uh, they're a lot more predictable than the chest is, I say, as it gets stuck in here. No, no, even- Well, even then it's still kind of predictable, and I still missed it. Um, the balls are a lot heavier than the chest, so it doesn't go flying everywhere. But, uh, it's definitely a little bit more challenging to get it than if it was falling normally. No. Uh, ugh. Ugh. This can be kind of annoying, strictly because the balls don't fall nicely into place sometimes when you really, really want them to. So you have to be very, very careful. Ah, that should be fine, right? No, don't fall off. Hey. Hey. You should just, like... No, no. Mm, mm, I'm a little bit afraid. I'm a little bit afraid, so I'm just gonna just just do this. Just do that. That should work out fine, right? That's gonna hit the wall and bounce off and maybe land inside. Fingers crossed. Oh, that was even worse. That makes it even worse. Okay. 
Here's my plan. Stay. Like, maybe two hits should be fine. That should... That's gonna bounce it off. That's gonna bounce it off, isn't it? What's down there? Okay, no, that's fine. Whew. Um, there's... This down here. I guess if you accidentally fell down for whatever reason, you could come down to this area and climb back up. It's kind of like an area of grace where you, you know... I don't know. I, I don't know if an area of grace makes sense. I was more so trying to say it's like a grace period or something similar to that, but with a place... I don't know. The terminology slips in my mind. It's a safe... It's a safe zone. You can fall off and you don't actually die. Something like that. Um... Fingers crossed this is something good. Phrenic bow. It's a quick shot. That's 10. I don't want that either. Yeah, actually, you know what? I might as well, since they're giving me so many, and I have like 50 of the knight's bows. You can get out of here. I'll pick it up. I want at least one spoil from this shrine. And now we just have to make our way all the, all the way up. Ugh. Ugh. If I die here, I'm actually going to be really sad. I'm hoping I'm not going to, but I just have this feeling that I might. Uh, Breath of the Wild has this issue with certain really, really slow-moving objects doing a decent amount of damage to you, or at least some amount of damage, which, again, any amount of damage right now is deadly. So, if I get hit by, like, a really slow-moving big boulder, then I'm gone. Even if it's really, really slow. So, I need to be a little bit careful about stuff like that. We got a spirit orb. I have a question that I might be able to answer in a little bit, a little bit, because I do have this amiibo and I do want to try it out, but. Actually, speaking of Amiibo, I might as well, even though we're in these dire situations, I might as well, uh, not try to change the weapon I'm using, because that's not gonna work out. I might as well use my Amiibo, right? It can't hurt, it can't hurt. I want some free stuff, and doing it daily, again, cannot hurt. There we go. And, uh, speaking of Amiibo, while I'm opening these up, my question to myself, that I might test out in a minute, is... How useful would Wolf Link be here? Could I just let him go wild and, you know, kill all of the enemies for me? I feel like that wouldn't work out too well. Because the enemies, in turn, would probably see me. I have two of those now, right? Wow! I have two of them! Um, but the enemies would probably end up seeing me, and it just wouldn't work out in a, a good way whatsoever. Uh, because Wolflink is kind of known for attacking whenever he, you know, wants to. And it's not helpful in a situation like this. But, uh, whatever, whatever. I might try it in a little bit when we get to the next area. Though I'm not expecting great results. This area right here is kind of interesting. If you played a demo for Breath of the Wild, I'm not sure exactly what demo it was, I believe. You can play the same demo that I'm talking about at, like, kiosks and Target or wherever. But, uh, this is actually where your demo starts. You are fully dressed in the champion's clothing. You can pick up all these items and, uh, just kind of move out and explore the world. So, I never came to that area during my playthrough, and, uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting to note. I was going there in the first place. I forgot that I was going to pass by that area. And now that I have, there you go. It's just kind of an interesting thing to note. Also, something else to note, there are no other enemies. I, I lied. I lied. I thought that there were no other enemies on the Great Plateau that were not part of the challenges, but apparently I lied. There are some enemies, just not the normal ones you would see. 
For example, down there, there used to be some bokoblins, now there aren't, so you can't push the boulders onto them, which kind of makes me sad. I wanted to kill bokoblins in a mean way, but... Am I a bad person? I'm probably a bad person. Um... I really enjoy going back to this area, strictly because I never really explored it too much while doing my normal playthrough. Um, strictly because I didn't find the need to. I was like, there are four shrines here, that's all there is. I don't really see a need to come back here or, you know, just explore this area anymore. And, um, I don't know, it's kind of nice coming back here and seeing everything this area has to offer, because uh, there were a lot of things I skipped over. There's a Stepe Talus, I believe, in the Great Plateau as well, and uh, that's pretty neat. And since we're in the Great Plateau, I might as well talk about another feature that I just didn't really ignore, but plan to record footage of in the future, and I probably still will do that, to give a little bit more of an in-depth explanation of this mode, but um, if you purchased DLC Pack 2, <gasps> you would get a new mode called Master Mode. Essentially, it would make everything much, much more difficult. Again, I'll go into um, specifics later, but the reason I brought this up now is because there would be a Lionel in the Great Plateau. Yeah, in the starting area, when you have, like, nothing, there would be a Lionel. Now, keep in mind, I think, I believe they do change up some of the items that you can get in the Great Plateau, depending on if you're playing on Master Mode or Normal Mode. I don't want them to see me. Ooh, that was a little bit close. That was a little bit close. I don't know if I want to take this route. I was going from behind, and this will give me the advantage over some of the other Lozolfos that we'll see. So I do want to see if this is the best possible way for me to get around this. Uh, I can kind of hit him. There we go. Okay. He didn't sound the alarm. Thank God. Um, there's also... Ooh. Ooh. I might have a little bit of fun with this. There's one Lizalfus over here I want to take care of before I actually do anything else. One more should be good. Nope! Come on! Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. They don't really know where I am, right? They do. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, I'm just going to kind of bow and arrow it because I don't particularly... Uh, hi! Bye! I didn't see you there! Whoops! When something surprises me, I don't, like, usually freak out and scream. I just jump. So, you didn't see that, but that Lizalfo scared the crap out of me. I jumped quite a lot. Uh, one more hit should be fine. There we go. Goodbye. I really don't want to deal with you. Where's that other Lizalfo that I didn't see previously? He might have crawled up from a different area. I want to see. One hit should be... One miss should be fine. Um, also something else to note. The Master Sword, it's at 60 power. Too bad you can't use it. I don't know why they made that happen. I don't really get it. Uh, I guess it's because this has something to do with the Ancients. So the Master Sword's power is significantly more powerful here. But again, why would you need to go through the trouble of doing that if you can't use the Master Sword? I don't know, it's just kind of dumb. Um, oh, hi. Uh, can you, like, not- mm, mm, This isn't what I wanted! This isn't what I wanted! I didn't want you to see me, but that's fine! Okay, I think they can throw those. Uh, you're fast, so please leave for just one second. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna shoot you just to get rid of you quickly. Goodbye. I can deal with this guy right here. Yeah, it feels good to do that, because I don't usually get to do that. You have a spear. Mm. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a good plan, but it was funny, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay, you have fire arrows. Hey, how about you uh, don't use those? Thanks. Bye. Have a nice day. You can also get away. That's not really what I meant, but okay, that works out too, I guess. Uh, please. No! Jump to the side. I didn't fury rush. That's fine. That's fine. I do want to get out of here real quick. 
this is scaring me. They have a lot of long-ranged weapons, and I'm not down for that. That makes my bow and arrow essentially useless. useless. You can please back off. Why do you want to get so close? Why do you want to get so close? Okay, you know what? This power's back. Try to do me again. Come on. Try again. Goodbye. Thank you. God, that's scary. That's really scary because I'm so vulnerable and they move so fast. Dear God, anyway. Uh, there should be one more down here, right? Right? No. Okay, I could have used those bees to make that a little bit easier, but guess what I didn't do? Uh, I'm smart. Um, I want to see if I can mess this guy up real quick. Oh, hi, bye. I don't know, blowing things up just feels so good, but it's so impractical. Like, it doesn't do a lot of damage at all, and if you're gonna blow something up, I guess it does damage to multiple enemies at once, um, but like, just shoot at them. To be honest, it just does more damage overall. Hi, I didn't see you. Bye. Oh, never mind. Forgot I don't have the war elbow on, it broke five seconds ago, so... Fun! Another shrine is open, which is all the way over there. Oh god, I have to walk five centimeters? Ugh, so difficult. Mm, no, it's not that bad. Sometimes they can spawn a little bit far away from you, and that can be kind of annoying, but it's not too bad usually. Stop to start. Ooh, baby, this one. Um, actually, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I can't use the amiibo one? Okay. Well, I was trying to see. I'm very interested in Wolf Link for whatever reason. I was trying to see if I could use Wolf Link in a shrine. I don't know how that would help me a lot, unless it was like a test of strength. But, uh, anyway. This is interesting. I really, really like this shrine. Essentially, there are these spikes on the ground. They bounce up, bounce down. They bounce every single which way. What you want to do is, when the spikes are changing, you want to stop moving because you don't want to jump onto something when it bounces up or bounces downwards. That usually makes you overshoot or undershoot something. That has how much? 39, right? Something like that. Which is significantly better than this. So this can get out of my inventory. Thank you very much. I don't think I actually ever used a Forest Dweller's Shield. So, um, hey, let's use it right now. Um, this area is just, it's really, really nice. I really enjoy it. There are a lot of spikes, which in this state are, again, instant kill. So it can be a little bit treacherous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run onto this one. This one's not too dangerous, but this moving one, this moving gear is a little bit more precarious. So I want to move that and, or move it, stop it from moving. That's the exact opposite of what I said. Um, there we go. That just makes things a little bit easier. This area can be a little bit tricky. You want to use your glider to get past here, but sometimes these... Not sometimes. They always move around. As you can see, there's stuff on the top that is making them consistently move back and forth. So if you try to use Magnesis to stop them... Or not Magnesis. Wait, no, it's Magnesis, right? Magnesis. Yeah, sorry. If you try to use Magnesis to stop the balls, they won't stop. They'll start moving up again. But if you use Stasis, you can. Sadly, you can only affect one at once, so you want to affect the one that's going to give you the most trouble. I don't know if that was the best choice, but you know what? I made it through, so it doesn't matter. That was a little bit weird. That was... Ugh. And then this area. I want to test something, so I'm going to stop and wait for my Magnesis to start again. Or not my, not my Magnesis, my Stasis. Wait for my Stasis to recharge. Because this wall of spikes will come out of nowhere and start to chase you. What I'm wondering is, nope, I cannot even use this. I cannot even use this rune. Uh, stasis, that is. I'm forgetting the rune names for whatever reason. This can be a little bit tricky. Specifically because these spikes are jumping out from every wi- Are you kidding me? I got past every single actual obstacle they, obstacle they gave me, and I- I ran off the cliff! Hmm.
Oh yeah, by the way, you start all the way over at the beginning when you die. Ooh, joy. Something else to note, uh, actually, while I'm in this area, is that these spikes can be a little bit annoying, specifically while dealing with this, um, this box, because they are in a checkerboard pattern. So it makes things a little bit difficult sometimes. Remember when I said to not jump when things were moving? Huh. I wonder what happened to that rule. Okay. Uh... Uh, this should work out fine. That was actually really smooth. I <laughs> thought using or not using stasis would mess me up a little bit, but that actually wasn't bad. And uh, anyway, more importantly, try number two. What I was trying to say before I killed myself was that this area can be a little bit challenging, just specifically because. Uh, these spikes are bouncing out of everywhere. They do that to trick you. That caught me uh, pretty good. Um, this one's also a little tricky just to figure out what to do. It's not too bad, though. You just jump to the right and then, you know, just get to the end. Um, I'm going to wait here for a second just to show you that back there, that spike wall is still slowly moving closer to me. It's not going to actually ever, like, get cl What's the word I'm looking for? It's going to stop eventually. Um, I was actually really curious to see if the spike wall would just come up and kind of tap the ancient on the nose and, or just like go straight through him, but nope, it stops right there. So it's not a big deal. Blech. It's, it's, I don't know what I'm trying to say. The spike wall stops. That's what I was trying to say. Why didn't I just stop when that's, ah, uh, ah, uh, whatever. Alright, so that is two of... Cass? What it... Cass? Hmm, I wasn't expected to see a traveler on this solitary plateau. Ah, we meet again! Hmm, not to be rude, but you don't look so well. Much like this plateau, you're looking a mite dreary. Oh, I apologize. Perhaps it was not my place to say as such. I understand more than most the burdens of travel. As for me, I came to this spot to pursue an ancient song about a hero at this at this very plateau. I can't shake the feeling that we were destined to meet here. In any case, would you like to hear my song? Yeah, why not? Thank you, kind traveler. Now then, please open your ears and your heart to my song. That's the name of the game, you get it. Curious indeed. As it were, I pursued my teacher's old notes and found that song there. Hmm. What sort of sound could alarm a horse so effectively? Kabam? Kapow? Rumble rumble? Honestly, I have no clue. It certainly helps to visit the locations that inspired the song. Yes, it helps op open my mind to inspiration. Those notes had other interesting songs, too. I plan to visit those locations as well. Cass is an important character for this DLC pack, and we'll get into more of that later, but he's in the Great Plateau right now for whatever reason, something I didn't know at all. So, uh, hi, Cass. Anyway, we have done two of the four shrines that we need to do on the Great Plateau. With that being said... Next time on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I got it right this time, I'll continue on doing these shrines and finish them up. But again, that's for next time. Until then.